as she's turned around, there's a six foot odd guy, boiler suit on, rubber mask, wallop. I think she had like 40 odd stitches on that first one. Done her over the head. Cable tied her hands and legs up. Continue to ax her, beat her. Yeah, it's an image that I can't get out of my head. Just butchered. I was Skyping with a girl that I was seeing, masturbating while she was playing with herself. I got nothing now. I got nothing left. Just a quick one. I want to thank our main sponsors, Bauer Security. They're a UK based security firm that cover the entertainment, industrial, corporate, and construction industries. I'm going to leave the links to their Instagram and their website below in the description so you can contact them direct. You can also find my own social media platforms down there too. And if you've got this far and you haven't yet liked and subscribed to the channel, can I ask that you do so? It takes two seconds, costs nothing, and it helps us improve the experience for the guests and for those at home watching. Thanks again. Your support is greatly appreciated and I hope you enjoy this one. Cut. Liam. Mate, it's good to see you again. Thank you for having me back on, yeah. Thank you for coming back on because A, I know that you get asked a hell of a lot to be guests on people's podcasts. Yes. I also know that we covered your entire life story before, which yeah. was very emotional mm -hmm. and you are reluctant to revisit those times again, which today yep. we're not. There's a whole completely different topic I want to discuss today and I want the mainstream media to be held accountable for their for their behaviour. Mm. They wreck lives, they print lies continuously even when they print truths it has a knock on effect and it's like they just completely disregard anybody so when i was looking into all the articles about you and we're oh. talking like across the board yeah the mail the star the mirror the sun because when one print a story about you they all jump oh in. yeah so i'm reading things i didn't even know about you so i'm sure some are going to have some truth some will be truthful and mm -hmm. some are going to be outright lies and i'm going to love finding out yeah. Which ones are which? There is one that stood out more than anything that was, it was horrific. Uh, David Richards. So, so from what I've read, he was an ex-manager of the Dream Boys and he's attempted to kill his wife. Mm -hmm. Consequently got 27 years. So it, it was no joke. He's butchered her with an axe yes. and he turned up to kill her with cable ties yes. and he had his own forensic gear. So he, he went there to take her life. Mm. And the headlines were that this David Richards had seen you kissing uh, his ex-partner. Mm. So they weren't currently together. And off the back of that, he decided to murder her. And then turns out he's, well, he's now dead. He died, yeah. in, he died in prison, but they didn't confirm how he died. And I'm thinking, well, did he commit suicide or did somebody top him? Because people don't like no, yeah. people that are going to go and murder women. Yeah. So tell me about that. Yeah, I was very surprised when that came up. So I'm going to just try and whack it down as, as short as I can. Many years ago, I used to, um, a girl used to work in our nightclub doing a, a night that I used to put on. Um, hadn't seen, we dated when we were like 18, 19. Then hadn't seen each other for many, many years, but always, always had each other on Facebook. And um, I see that she's got a lovely life, a lovely husband or fiance, kids, an amazing house. And yeah, I think I always just kept tracks on her. You know, when you're on, you're on Facebook and you just... You're going through people's stories. And I was like, oh, wow, her life looks amazing now. Really happy for her. And um, 2021, I think it was, I think she got in contact with me regarding some jet washing. I had the jet washing company at the time. And I think I went to meet her to talk about it. She wanted a quote or something. And uh, we just hit it off again. But she tells me she's been single for a long time. She had a bit of issues with her partner. Um, and that was it. We sort of started, um, let's say, dating. You know, I was chilling with her. And then I find out she talks about her ex. And again, this is her story, so I don't want to go into it. We want to go to why the paper made it worse. She was with a, with an ex in a domestic abuse, uh, abusive relationship, apparently. So she called it off. What I wasn't aware of straight away, she had a court case pending and uh, injunctions on him. Uh, restraining orders, sorry. Um, so when I'm dating this girl, she now rings me up crying. Kirk, he's chasing me, he's chasing me. I'm like... Right, we'll ring the police. You've got a restraining order. She's like, I'm filming him doing it. She, she's like, I've got him on my phone, ch him chasing me in the car. I was like, perfect. Show the police. He'll get remanded. You know, he's, he's... Anyway, this happened a few times. She keeps ringing the police. They weren't nicking the guy. 
even to the point of once he, they chased him in a car, he got away and they just left it, even though the neighbours have told this girl saying, oh, we've seen him at your front door. So I got quite close to this girl in a protective way, in mm. a sense, you know. So um, she kept saying to me, Kurt, this, this guy's going to kill me. Like he, I know, I know him, you know, he will kill me. Um, so I just felt this urge to look after her and her two children, which were their children. Um, she was living in the family home that, that he purchased and built. Um, so I would never stay overnight. Um, and I'd never went upstairs into the bedroom because it's not my, it's not my thing, even though from what she says, the guy was a dog and it proved that he was. Mm. Um, it's not for me to go in a man's house upstairs to a bedroom and stuff like that. So I used to stay and sort of look after her until, I don't know, as late as I could, 10, 11, 12 at night. And then every night I got home, I would message her and say, home now, babe. And she'd be like, yeah, I'm in bed. Um, and then I'd go sleep straight around as the next day or whenever we could meet up again. And then I think it must have been a week or two doing this. Um, he finally got arrested for breaking his bow, but they released him. Um, they released him by as they put more charges on him as well when they arrested him, but released him. Mm. Not only did they release him, they took him home. Uh, he was staying at a hotel at the end of her road. Um, she's already told the police that he is a maniac. So when we got the call to say, oh, he hasn't been reminded, he's been let out. I was like, oh, shit, I think it's going to go off, you know. So anyway, I was in her house that that evening and it was, it just didn't feel the same. She had guard dogs, they were barking like crazy. Anyway, well, I think we ended up falling asleep on the sofa. I woke up about one in the morning and said, oh, I've got to go, you know, because again, I'm not going in, a, in another man's bed. It's, it's not fair. Um, so I drive home, 15 minute journey home. Text her as I pull into my gates. Didn't get the instant text that I normally get, but I thought, oh, one of her kids might have woken up or something like that. The time I got from my car across my driveway into my house, I get a call from her, it come up as an email, a FaceTime. So I answer it and, um, oh, it's, it's, uh, I can see her. And I'm sorry to say her, by the way, I just don't want to bring her name into it. That's so I'm enough. not saying her in a rude way. Um, because this is her story, I'm taking nothing away from her. Just, we're obviously going to go on to about the newspaper, but um, well, I, because it is in the newspaper, yes, in the public domain, yeah, uh, you know, um, we can so talk about it. I answer the um, FaceTime. I thought it might be saying like I broke my phone or something because she's not rung me, and she is sitting on the floor at the foot of her bed. Um, fucking hell, it's um, just just butchered, like. Um, yeah, it's an image that I can't get out of my head. I've never seen anyone like that before. Um, I mean, just butchered. Covered like, in blood. Yeah, like, not just blood. She was open. Her head's open, her arms are off, hanging off. Her shoulders, like, her face, her head, like... Imagine getting a 10-litre pot of blood-coloured paint and just pouring it on her head. You can't even get it in horror movies. They can't even get it to look as gruesome as this looked. And so when I've answered the FaceTime, she must have propped the iPad because she wasn't holding it. So I've opened it. She's sitting at the foot of her bed, leaning, with a phone in her hand and a knife in this hand. And as calm as anything, she just said, Kirk, come and get my kids. He's killed me. And I I just never, I just literally, what the fuck's happened? She's like, he's here. He's done me with an axe. He's going to kill me. Please come and get my children. As calm as anything. Like, and I've literally, I've just run out my fucking door. I remember we're, we're near my car. It was a bit of a building site. We were doing work to the garage. I grabbed a stupid bit of wood. Like, jumped in the car and FaceTiming out. I can hear someone in the background. I'm like, who's there? Who's there? When I've been quiet and can listen, because she's in and out of consciousness, you know? And, um... I've now made wind. The reason she has me on the iPad because she has her phone that she's on the phone to the police. Now, I can hear the police on the phone say, we think he's in the house, we can hear someone. So I am now talking via the iPad to the police on her phone on loudspeaker saying, look, my name's Kirk. Um, this is her name. This is his name. If you look into it, you'll see what's gone on over the last couple of weeks. Um, I said, I'm on my way there now. I'm driving like a madman. Even to the point when I got there, I had to tell the police. I said, please, I've just had to go down an average speed camera at about 120. They said, circumstances, Kirk, you know what I mean? So at one point, yeah, she just goes. She's gone. Like, And I thought she died. 
And I'm like, and I'm shouting, she's fucking dead, she's dead, she's dead, to the, to the police on the loudspeaker on the phone. And um, I could see her bed and her bedroom door and down her corridor. She has two children, I think two and seven. They've heard the commotion. They've run out. Her two-year-old has gone and sat on her lap. And I've just said to her daughter, I won't say her name, but I was like, grab Grab your little brother. Mummy's fallen over. Please take your your brother in the door uh, in the bedroom and lock the door until I'm now. Anyway, so I've rocked up at the house, met by armed police, pointing a gun at the car. I've just jumped out with this bit of wood. I was like, what am I going to do with this? I said, look, where is she? Where is she? I could see all the police at the door. Um, I said, look, I've been the one on the phone. Um, I think they were all aware of me because by the time they've got there, they've got a briefing that they assumed this was going to happen, you know? Um... Now, when I've run to the door, all the police have stopped me going in. I can see her unconscious on the um, kitchen floor. You can see through a hallway to her kitchen. I mean, claret everywhere. Like, and they, I'm trying to barge in. They're like, Kurt, you can't come in. You can't come in. I'm like, fucking please, let me in. Let me in. I said, her kids are up there. They're like, are you, are you family? I said, no. But her kids are at the top of the fucking stairs. They're like, we're sorted. I said, her kids know me. Mm. They're fine with me, you know, and they wouldn't let me in. And I had to have a go at one of the policemen because as one of the policemen that were coming out, he said to uh, his colleague next to me, oh, my God, have you seen her arm? I've never seen an injury like that. It's straight through her arm. I was like, mate, you need to fucking tell him. Her kids can hear and I can hear. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, uh, helicopter's out. Uh, They caught him an hour up the road, the geezer, um, still covered in claret. I got told by the police that he'd plotted to do this for a while. Um... This is what happened. When she let me out that night that I went home, she, and again, I'm, I really, I've never told this story because it's not my story. Mm. I was just there, you know, and this girl is so brave. I doubt any other woman would survive what she went through. I know for a fact no man. And the reason she's alive is because she's a single mum. And I respect single mum so much. You as well. Do you know what I mean? Raised by one, yeah. You know, my mum was, yeah, still is, you know, she's not single no more, but. She raised me as a single mum. So I, and the power of single men, women mm. is unbelievable, you know. So she's let me out the gate. She had a farm and stables. And what she normally does when she lets me out, she has two working dogs. I think they're cock spaniels or something that she's got a stable turned into a kennel. She locks them in at night. So anyway, she's let me, let me out. And then on my drive home, she's gone past her house to the stable to lock the dogs in. As she's turned round, there's a six-foot-odd guy with a um, boiler suit on, rubber mask, wallop, done her over his left hand. He's done her over the head. I think she had like 40-odd stitches on that first one. Done her over the head. Um, took her straight to the floor. Uh, obviously, this is his house as well, so he knows the layout like you wouldn't believe. Chops her up a little bit on the floor. And drags her into one of the stables they turned in. They were going to breed dogs years ago. So they had like a, you know, the white perspex whelping units. It was all. Mm-hmm. So he's dragged her in now. Um, cable tied her hands and legs up. Um, continued to axe her, beat her. Um, she's like, yeah, I got arrested the other day. You told the police this. So when he got arrested a few days prior, she threw another charge that she was also always too scared to tell the police when he was out. Mm. But when she knew he was in custody... She said, oh, I can say it now. Because I said, I, I hold my hands up. I said, if you tell the police this, he won't get out. He'll be remanded. And it should have done. I can't say what it was, but he should have been remanded. So he's now cable tied her up. And he said, you've, you've told the police I've done this. You're going to end my life or whatever. Um, and she is now cable tied, hands and legs up. She's been axed multiple times over the head, face, shoulders and arms. Beaten by, see, he wasn't a small guy. Um... And all she knew to say is, it wasn't me, it was so-and-so. Check my email. Her phone had fallen out from the first initial blow. Um, so he's gone to the middle of the stable yard to pick up the phone. She's ripped out of a cable tie, run, run to her house. He's chased her with the axe, which the CCTV in court showed him chasing her. Um, and she shut the door. When I went to the scene the next day to help tidy up, on the when you shut the front door, on the inside of the front door, there's a blood handprint blood handprint, um, big round mark where her head was up against it. And also under the left handprint was just splurts where he'd done through her wrist as well. I think he went that, he went right through her hand down there. I think she would try to stop one and he's gone straight through her. Mm. 
And then I could see blood footprints all the way to the kitchen, to your knife set. Then the blood footprints come back and then they're getting thicker and thicker. Then up the stairs, blood handprints, body marks where she's dragged herself upstairs. And then he fleed the scene. Um, he had planned this, apparently. The police had worked out. He would planned this for ages. Um, not only that, in the, in the back of his boot, they found, I think it was like 12 or 20 odd bottles of bleach. Did he have, do you know if he had any plans to take you out as well? No, nah, he's a pussy, isn't he? Yeah, I was there. He, apparently he see me. He was there. He was waiting for me to go. Um, so I was there all day. And apparently that day he was stalking, um, he was stalking over us for five hours before he done the initial attack. And he would have seen me in the house, um, which is so scary now thinking of it. I was in the playroom playing with the children and um, there's a little window and uh, our youngest was is two. Never, never heard him say the word dad. And uh, he just looks up and goes, daddy. Now looking back at it, he must have clocked him through the window. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so he was looking at us. Uh, we found out weeks prior to that as well, he was breaking in upstairs when she was downstairs. He used to jump uh, onto a balcony and, and just spy. That's horror movie behaviour. This girl, again, this story ain't mine. I'm not taking away nothing from her. Like, she is... Well, kudos to her. Yeah, like, because the reason she had to flee, because she knew him, she was engaged with him for many years, she knew he was going to do the kids as well. He would have done them all. What we did notice as well, which was never in no police um, reports, actually, her car, which he also had a key for, when I was in hospital with her, her friend who was helping out with animals and said, why have you put your back seats down in your car? She hadn't. He must have done it that night when me and her was asleep on the sofa. Back seats down of her car. And it was all like, uh, I think it was white bedding, all laid down. So he was ready to do a good job. So after the attack, um, she was, it was bad. Like she was in bits, the poor girl, uh, mentally. No one was mental lad. So he was um, where she was high risk in the hospital because of the seriousness of the attack. Um, the police said no one's allowed to visit her um, because he hasn't finished, even though he got nicked, he hasn't finished a job that he set out to do. And he's so, probably connected. So they're scared mm. that someone might. So I said, no, I'm, I've got to go in with her. I've got to go in with her. Um, so I limited my work down to one job a day and uh, I had a code word. They give it a code word, superwoman. So I had to say that when I got to the hospital for them to allow me in with her. So it was just me. I think I stayed in the hospital with her for a couple of weeks from about... 12 in the afternoon till about 11, 12 at night. Um, and she, sometimes if I move too fast next door in the hospital, she'd freak out and stuff. And, you know, uh, she, she, yeah, it was horrible. I remember I had to give her her first shower, which I had to wash her hair for her because uh, I could, so I was sitting, hospital rooms ain't big, but she was laying in a bed. I was sitting at the chair, you know, there's always a chair in the corner of the hospital. Yeah. I could smell the copper, you know, the iron mm -hmm. smell, smell it. And, um, I had a Tesco's carrier bag of hair when I washed her hair that come out because we didn't know how much hair he'd cut because the blood was all holding it together. But the hair, like, was just just cut, like, all falling out. And I, you know, I'd give her a shower, which was horrible for her, must have been. That's like horrific. But for me as well, I'd realised the extent of her injuries from the ones that see in the axe. When I was showering her um, in the hospital, I could see his foot, his trainer or boot, whatever he was wearing, in her back. Mm. Like, he stamped on her that hard. It was perfect. It didn't look, oh, that looked like a shoe. I could probably tell you what brand of shoe it would have been, what boot it was. Did you feel responsible in any way? You know, your mind plays games with you. If I hadn't have been sleeping with her, would it have happened? No. She knew he was going to do this prior to him meeting me. Because if it weren't you, it would have been somebody else. But I just want to know how you felt about yeah, it. Yeah, no, um... You got the FaceTime and she's covered in blood. That's Yeah, I've done my best. Um, I wished he was there when I got there, you know. Yeah, um, yeah man. Yeah, like for him to wait, mm. you got a, a, and she's a small, she's a small lady. Very powerful, very athletic though, but she's tiny. For him to watch me leave, mm. to then go do that while there's two his kids upstairs, you know, that's just a, wait. That's a coward. Just wait. He could have done me at the door. You know what I mean? It's a big farm. It's very dark at night. He could have done me there. I'm not saying I'll probably... If he'd done to me what he'd done to her, I wouldn't be here today. And if he caught you unaware as well? One million percent. He was a big geezer. The only reason she survived is because she is a single mum and she knew she had them two kids in there. And do you know how the full story that included you got leaked to the press? 
obviously, this happened while I was active on social media. And no one would have known. I was at the hospital every day with her. I still had to try and be Kirk, you know. Um, still was doing my jet wash and promoting that. Um, and I wouldn't tell no one. It's not my story. Um, and then I get a call. I think it's from someone who used to represent me when I was on TV. Saying, Kirk, um, he says, this sounds a bit far-fetched, but um, journalists just spoke me up and told me about this and said about the whole attack and my involvement. So how the fuck do they know? Mm. So when there was the court case for him to be sentenced, um, journalists got wind of it because he used to own the Dream Boys. And I think he'd been on ITV and this morning a little bit promoting the Dream Boys. So they went purely, it was going to be a little article probably, one of the dream boys has become a, not a serial killer, what, what what would you call him? I don't know. A psychopath. A psychopath, yeah. Um, so when they've gone to the call, I think it might have been uh, the scum. I think that's how you pronounce it, isn't it? The scum newspaper? That's I, it, I yeah. think that's how you pronounce it. Spelt yeah. S-U-N, yeah, but pronounced, pronounced scum. scum. So um, <laughs> when I went, when they, I spoke to the journalist because I tried to get him to pull it. Um, he said, Kirk, we didn't even know nothing about you. We're in there to do an article about a Dream boy, a business owner that's tried to axe his wife to death. We're mid hearing and we just hear Kirk Norcross name pop up in court. Mm. And they're like, oh, wow, we've hit gold. And I said, listen, I said, please don't put this out. I said, I have children of my own. If my son's mum finds out about this, I said, she has every right to say, Kirk, your son can't come to you for a while because he's a bit. We don't know if he was a group of people or one person. Do you know what I mean? No, totally. I said, please don't let this go out. You know, it's nothing to do with me. I was just there, rah, rah, rah. And they said, well, no, we're printing it anyway. Um, and I said, there's no need for me. If I even wasn't there or didn't even know this girl, that same thing would have happened. And um, The story is extreme enough. Mm, yeah. You man. don't need any additional extras. You know, and, um, and they said, no, we're printing it. We're printing it. And then come out and I so I never read I never google myself um I never everyone like the scum and the mirror and everything like that they're all blocked on my social media and facebook so I can't even have them in my algorithm that that life is not of me that that even that I do want to go back on tv that the media side to that is irrelevant to me you know what I mean um but then I see the headline um I think someone sent it to me I can't remember who sent it to me and um it's can you remember the actual headline? Because you read it yesterday, I think. Words to the effect of David Richards sentenced to 27 years for attempting to murder his wife with an axe because he saw her kissing Kirk Norcross on their doorstep. Yeah, so that that's it. So what it looks like is the the the, the brush that I always get painted with. Kirk's fucking around again. Kirk's what? fucking around with women. Womanising, yeah. This woman... By all accounts, what she told me, and which is true, she'd been single for over a year or, or, or about a year. Well, the article did say they separated 18 months yeah, previous. But the headline doesn't state that. Oh, the clickbait is... The clickbait mm. is Kurt Norcross, uh, uh, no, girl gets attacked by axe when partner sees Kurt kissing on the doorstep. It can be worded in a way where people would read that and think... I've cheated on in a sense, like there's an affair. Part, you could be responsible. Yes. First of all, I'm very romantic. I'm a gentleman. You know, it's not 1920s. Good evening, my dear. I've never <laughs> kissed anyone on their doorstep. And even if I did, that attack was inevitable. She knew this was going to happen when she was with the guy. This is why she split up with the guy. Mm. So for them to portray that um, that I was a reason, maybe. Yeah, you it, know? Looks, it looks bad. Yeah. The, head, like, the headline does look bad. And so to move on from there and... Mm. Not to full respect to that woman for what mm. she done. Oh, amazing. And also, just like people bear that in mind, this shit does happen and kudos and strength to her. Yes. So, going back to you being romantic and people selling their stories, there's but you've had, I mean, the amount of kiss and tells that I read about you yesterday, it's like, well, I never knew about that. I'd, you've had ex girlfriends sell, uh, sell stories about you from what it would appear. You've had mm. porn stars talk about your intimate love life. Mm. Now, for me, when I'm reading that, I'm thinking, Okay, so there's a porn star saying that you've you've got a cock the size of a cucumber. <laughs> so partly I'm thinking Kirk will probably like that. But also, when you've got a porn star talking about your intimate, private life, you are romantic, you do want to settle down, you do want a wife. That is going to put potential females off wanting to be your wife. Yeah, that, that one article, the headline was great. Um, I think it was Kirk's manhood is the size of a cucumber. 
I didn't think reading that article, oh, that's big. I just thought, oh, they're going to think it's green and bumpy. You know, that's all I thought. <laughs> but yeah, look, I have been, I've had one night stands. I've been in relationships, boyfriend and girlfriend. I've just been seeing someone. I've been on having sexual relationships with people. And at one point in my life, not the greatest point, I was, I think I was very, very, very heavily on drugs. Um, I was seeing getting intimate with, with a, with a girl, her, her industry was porn. Um, and we'd had sex multiple times. Did you read the whole article? Not all of it. Yeah. I've, so I wanted to, I want to hear it from the horse's so, mouth because I, I know the chances are that there's going to be bullshit in that article. You know, when, look, when I was on drugs, sex was filth, hmm. you know, bring a bag of toys with you, love one of them ones. You know what I mean? Um, sex is for the, the girl, not just for me. I want you to have the best experience you can. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And um, so I think the article sort of read like Kirk, I think it was, it, Kirk, would, he was just having sex with me for hours and hours and uh, or a day or something silly like, and uh, he used to just um, watch me playing with my toys. Like, first of all, you're putting it like I've made you do that. Like, it wasn't us having a kinky night in. You're having a drink, kinky night in. Do you know what I mean? And uh, and I don't understand why that got printed, Liam, because I am not the only person in the world that has had sex. I'm not the only person that probably used a toy on their partner or someone they're having sex with. I'm not the only person that's got drunk and had sex all night. Yes, I was on TV. Yes, my life was on social media. But for them, look, that girl, she wants to sell her story to her money or clout. That's that's up to her. She can say whatever she wants. But how can a paper just print about my intimate life, like what my body looks like, what my penis looks like, what I actually do in bed? Yeah, look, I was on a reality show, but did you ever see me have sex on that show? Did you ever see me get my cock out on that show? This That stuff has made me do the things that I've done now, like... I am half naked on most of my videos and my pictures because the fucking papers have they've, they've left nothing left of me. Mm. They've took it all. I've got nothing. Like if if the papers are going to own it, this is me. I will own it. You know, I always wanted to keep my body, um, oh, you, you know, my naked body private for my partner. You know, and the same as I would only like to be the the only person at this time to see my partner's naked body. Um, and I just don't know and how they can print in detail how I have sex without even ringing me, without even asking. It was a double page spread. That's what I wanted to ask you. And we'll cover a few more headlines and stories. A lot of these articles that I read, there was another one, for example, uh, where they printed that you thought you were dying of cancer mm. after a extended cocaine bender. There was that one there. There's a couple more that will come back to me. You'll, you'll, you'll jog my memory. Yes. But I'm thinking... Did you ever get a right to respond? Did they contact you and say, we're going to print this in two days, you've got a right to respond? Yeah. Most articles that I have, big, big articles that have been printed on me, your manager, PA, represent, uh, representative at the time will contact you and go, Kirk, this story's coming out. This is what they're saying. Do you want to have a say on it? And um, sometimes I wouldn't, and sometimes I would say it's completely fabricated. But look, I understand... At one part in my life that I was, uh, I hate, I've never I've never been a celebrity, never, never classed myself as, but I was in the public eye. I put a lot of my life on a TV show called TOWIE. Wasn't my real life, you know, it was quite fabricated, but, and I put a lot of my life on social media. But it can't give a newspaper or a certain journalist the right to be able to put anything in there. Like, even if something's truthful, like this, me having sex with this girl. Yeah, well, that was all truthful. Yeah, we did have sex. We were drunk. Well, I was having sex for a, for a fucking, I don't know, for a long sex session. Yeah, she was using her toys. You know, I can actually remember, because I remember when I was reading the article, uh, me and my cousin, we was at Yo Sushi, and we just sat standing now, and he read it out to me, and he went, a bit quiet, and he went, you were on coke on this. I went, how do you know? because I think a part of it said he was just smoking fags while I was playing with my sex toys. He says, I know what you were like. You'll be up at your window smoking a fag while she's having sex with herself, like with her fucking dildos. Uh. Um, that was truthful. That that's What she said, what I'd done during sex, was truthful. 
But how am I now a part of the public? Oh, look, well, Kirk's been on a reality show. He showed you 60% of his life. Mm. Now, that, that's the right to show you everything. This is what he does in bed. No other girl now is ever going to feel special because he's done this with everyone. This was my point. You know, any girl now that might have read that article, if I say, oh, babe, do you want to use your toys tonight? Oh, uh, what, like you did with the other girl? Mm. Yeah, is this what you do with all the girls? It's, it, a bit like, it's a bit like meeting somebody for the first time. You hit it off, mega chemistry. Mm. You fall in love, pillow talk, and you reveal everything that you've done in your previous past. It's going to put them off you. One million percent. And it's going to hurt. Yeah, of course. And it's, and it's the oversharing at the start that gets used against you at the end. One million percent. And immediately, you, you're, you're, you're overshared. I understand it. There's a lot of stuff that's gone in the papers that's probably helped fund something I might have been doing, a brand or a show that I'm bringing out or a film that I'm in. I understand mm. how the media works. But we're at a, a, we're at a day and age now where people read that and that is gospel. Mm. What they just read, oh, Kirk's a c- What an horrible person. Kirk's home wrecker. He's got that girl killed because he's kissing a wire husband's there. You know, they believe that. Mm. Sometimes I used to go down the rabbit hole and read the comments on these when I was on TV. And fucking hell. You don't read the comments no more, do you? No, I don't read the articles no more. Nothing. Well, well, here's a question. Is this gospel? Did your dad film porno films because he was hard up? Ah, right. Yes, yes, I remember this article. Right, this really pissed me off, okay? Um, So after my father died. By the way, before my father died, there was never no bad press about my dad. The scum, the mirror, the Daily Mail... If ever something was printed about him, it would be entrepreneur Mick, great father Mick. The minute he died, wow, no good things come out on Mick. All bad things, all shit, all lies, all fabricated. Um, There was an article that come out that my dad killed himself because he was hard up on money. Just before he died, he needed money so bad that he let a, uh, a porno production company film a porno in the sugar hut because my dad needed money. So let me tell you the element of truth to that. My dad built Sugar Hut. He redone it up, designed it. It cost him millions. He was so proud of this venue. Anyone was allowed to use Sugar Hut. With, I think, Love Island have filmed a bit there. Other shows have filmed in there. Obviously, Towie. And he probably would never charge them because he was he loved this thing that he created. It was lovely for him to then see it on TV. Mm. Um, yeah, a production company got in contact with my father and said, we're a porno company. I think they were doing a uh, spoof, a porn of Towie, it was. And they said, can we use one of your bars? And I don't think my dad charged. If he did charge for it, it would have been just to cover the staff that would have had to open the the bar that day. Um, That was probably five years before my dad's death. Nothing to do with money, nothing to do with my dad being hard up, nothing to do with my dad's death. Someone said, can we use your sugar up? We like it. Mm. My dad's like, brilliant, yes. This is what the fucking papers do. They made it that my dad was so bad and, and they know one minute death sells, sex sells. Oh, if we just say that he was so hard up, do you know what I mean? It's def- they're fucking, you don't think I was going through enough, me and my family. And look, people might think porn CD. I don't. It is what it is. It's entertainment. I watch porn. I fucking probably eight out of ten people watch porn. Um, but to paint my father with that light, for those some people are like, oh, Mix had to go down that road mm. as a he's scraping the barrel. To me, I'm not. I'm not saying that's how I feel. Porn's porn is what it is. They earn a fortune. Do you know what I mean? Um, but for now, to paint this, what weeks before my dad's death, you would have printed this entrepreneur, this great father, this this gentleman, Mick Norcross, to. Oh, Mick's dead now. You know that CD man was fucking pimping out his club for money? There's nothing like that. Mm. Years before my father's death, he let, like, I don't even think my dad was there that day at Sugar Up. Do you know what I mean? We used to get people ring us up. Oh, we're filming a music video. We're not big or anything, but can we use Sugar Up? Yeah, no worries. Any alcohol you use, as long as you pay for it, that's fine. You know? They just print what they fucking, look, they print what they want and put their spin on it to sell it. And the problem you have with the public as well, we've all got very short memories and we don't, really look to connect the dots because mm. around the same kind of time as that article's being printed that your dad's so hard up he's had to record porn films mm. there's also a story 
that he's moving to a four or five million pound house. It's like, well, you can't have it both yeah. ways. Is he buying a five million pound house or is he so hot yeah. up he's got to record porn? And again, the press reporting on a house that your dad's buying, which you'll be living in, no doubt, and the rest of your family, that's got to put you in some kind of danger. Yeah, this is one I asked to get pulled down as well. Um, so after my father's death, I, I lived on the family farm and we put it up for sale. Right. Um, I can't remember what state agent we used, but we put it up for sale. I think it was, was up for quite a bit, you know, quite a chunk of money. And the newspapers, as you said, one newspaper would do the original thing and then all of them are just ripped that off. And the headline is... McNorcross mansion up for sale for X amount of money. I'm like, you fuckers. You're about to tell. Let's let's the, the public don't know my family, like my my bro, I've got an older brother, um, and my dad's brothers and sisters and stuff, but no one knows the family, so I'm just saying me, for instance, okay? I'm not being selfish. But people, you never know what kind of world we're living in nowadays, Liam, yeah? People are looking. So it was always Kirk and his dad. Kirk and his dad. Kirk's dad's dead now, and uh he's selling his father's home. For four million. Some people will throw you in a van in a second, Liam. They don't fucking think. I know that's me thinking of... Well, no, going. that's exactly what happens nowadays. You know, I think people might... Some nutter on his last straw one day think, Kirk's about to come into four million. Because I read in the paper that that's how much he's selling his house for. Um, maybe if I take one of his kids or take him or threaten him. I, rung, I can't remember if I rung up the paper or someone. I can't remember... Again, that was, this is all after my dad's death, so it was quite a, a jaded part of my brain then. I was like, you can't be doing this. Mm. You're like, well, it's on right move. That, 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 you know what I mean? Yes, yeah, on right move. That people that are looking for a specific house, a specific price range in that area will know. They're not going to put the dots together and go, oh, that's Kirk and Mick's house. No. But now you're, first of all, telling everyone. So now people, until that house sells, because they put the right move link on the thing, you can now go see where that fucking house is. I'm in there until it sells with my kids. Without my father now. I had a 15-acre farm on my own until my dad went. Well, you do know? you remember what happened to that guy that, ra uh, that wrapped the cars for the celebrities? Oh, yeah, something bad happened to him. Well, really bad. So Yanni would would pu would uh, would make public how successful he was. Yeah. And in the end, people would just follow the trail of his success, follow the money, career criminals, turn up at his house, tied him up and his family up, demanded... Uh, they take him to the safe, gave him an absolute hiding of his <sighs> life. Is this real? Is he all right? Dam is damaged him for good. See, this is, this is again, this is the paper. So all that the paper says is when you say, like, you can't do this to me. Please don't print this. Mm. Well, you are in the public eye, Kirk. You are now public domain. No, 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 no. I'm aware of what you're saying. That is all valid. Yes, I was in a public eye and due to my social media, I still am in a pu public eye. If I didn't have the party bus company, VIP party buses, little plug, they're out to do it, I wouldn't be on Instagram. Mm. And that's the truth. There is no reason for me to be on Instagram. So what I do, I promote my party buses on there. So while I'm on there, I do stuff for mental health because then that helps me and other people out. But so what they say is cut your part of the public, public eye. You, they're real allowed to print if you put it on your Insta. But for them to... Find out somehow that my house is up for sale. I say mine. It wasn't mine. It was my father's. Never was mine. Never would have been mine. Mm. You know, even if it was still here. It was always my father's. But I'm just saying, you've now connected the dots for people, right? Even if I was ever to have put my house for sale on social media, which I didn't, might have reached a couple of hundred thousand people, say a million at most. You've just put it in a fucking newspaper where tens of millions of people are seeing it. Mm. You know, you're. I got quite scared during that time, you know, because it was worrying to know that they had the right move link on the, it was the online, uh, what say, say it was the man online, I'm not sure, but they put the right move link so you could look at my house. So not only can you now put the dots together, that house is Kirk's, when that house does get sold, he potentially is coming into this many millions. Hmm. But second of all, oh, why that is sold, we know where Kirk lives. Click the right move link. Tells you what road it is. Tells you where the house is. I tell you what, there's a picture of every gate and every an angle. There's 360 images, so you can have a look around his house. Oh, we're coming through that way. We're coming through that way. I think it was on the news years ago that burglars use right move now mm. to scope out an house before they do it. Mm -hmm. And you want to put that in now. And they know that four or five million pounds houses will have a safe full of Rolexes. Uh, a house that big, that expensive. Yeah, you you probably got something there, the cars. You know, and it was just, 
I was going through a fragile time after my father died. My dad was always my protector. I always try and look after myself as much as I can. But I felt that no one would could hurt me if my dad was alive. Mm. If I'd done something wrong myself, my dad would let me get hurt and I'd hold my hands up and take it. But no, no one would be breaking in. No one would be... Yeah. You know, I've got my dad there, mm. you know. But I've still got him with me, Liam, you know. So, yeah, he's he's with me. Um, but, yeah, the, them the, them printing that, and they just won't pull it down. So I, I state to them, like, please, can you just take the price away or even the right move, move link? No, it's on the internet already, Kirk. Yeah, but it's on fucking right move. You're now putting the right move that people don't know whose house that is with Kirk. Mm. And what about being thrown under the bus? How many people that you thought you could trust and rely on fed the press stories for a few quid? Oh, a lot of people. Well, no, not my pals. Like, so I, I I grew up living in a in a normal environment, sort of council eight, council estate environment. And a lot of my pals were my, my day ones, you know. Um, I don't think it's ever been mates, like close, close people. I remember when I was with um, Lauren Pope, still to this day, I think she's an amazing woman. All these articles kept coming out when I was dating Lauren Pope, even before I was with Lauren and even after me and Lauren split up. All really personal articles kept coming out. It was her best friend. Her best friend mm. that had been... I, I think she might have been at my house, but we'd been all out together. It was her best friend. Kept going to the newspaper. Just heard this about Lauren. Just heard about this about Kirk. Did you ever find out how much money they were paid for these stories? It, it could vary. It really... So, back in the day, probably when I started to tell, it was a lot of dough. You'd be getting your 5, 10, 15, 20 grand and stuff like that. Um, I did find out once that... Um, this is probably rumour, but a pap told me, a paparazzi told me, Kirk, be careful. He knew I loved the party. He said, all of us, there's there's hundred grand going about for you to get you involvement in drugs. And I was like, thank you for telling me that, you know? Yeah. So, so, you, so there was a price out on your head. There was head a price on my head. For somebody to catch you taking yeah. coke. Remember the porn star we were talking about earlier? Yeah. I hadn't spoke to her for ages. Um, because she'd do this story, right? The Kirk's got a cock the size of a cucumber. By the way, it's only the half size. You know, you can buy the half cucumbers. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Don't get excited. So... She'd, she'd ring me, like, days after the article come out. Hey, babe, you all right? You what? What are you up to? You fucking serious? Oh, no, babe, it weren't like that. I was just talking to someone. Someone overheard it. Fuck off. Mm. You know, you sold that story. If you really was going to do it, I could have given you more info and we could have split the dough. But, no, so the guy said hundred grand. That, that thing seems a bit too rich, uh, to be honest, right? But that porn star then, I hadn't spoke to her for years. And sorry to relate her to a porn star. It's only because I'm not going to state her name. Mm. She's more than a porn star. She's a person. She's a woman, you know. So I hadn't spoke to her for in a long time. She sold stories on me. I'm done with you. You know, listen, I ain't into that. If some people do want to do it and that's how they've got to do to even earn clan or money, you ain't a bit of me. So mm. if you're going to sell stories on me, I don't want you in my life, you know. Whatever we do in the bedroom or even behind a closed door. Either it be what we talk about, what we eat, and what we do in bed. Don't know fucking sell stories on me, man. Mm. You know, listen, I know I say a lot on social media and in podcasts, but... Well, when that's, I that's on your terms. When I shut my door, I'm, do I'm done. I'm done with the world, you know. I'm, I'm done, but I've got a heart and some stuff I like to keep it secret. But anyway, so this girl, out of the blue, I just get a message. Hi, Kirk. She'd never said my name ever. No one ever fucking announces anyone on a text, you know. If, I've had it happen a few times. People will message me with my name in the message and I just won't respond or, or just keep keep at a distance. I was like, yeah, all right, what are you up to? Uh, I think I'll try to ring her and she's like, oh, no, I'm working, text me. Oh, you fucking, I know your game. Thanks, thanks about to happen. Mm. She's like, Kirk, uh, I'm filming in Essex. Uh, can you get any cocaine? And then she repeated, I think it was, hi, Kirk, we're filming in Essex. Can you get some cocaine? Please, Kirk. So you think I'm born yesterday? You think, <laughs> listen, you said my name twice in a text. You've said the word cocaine. Yeah. People that ain't even done coke before will never say cocaine. She wants the screenshot. She wanted that. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, I don't know what you mean. Mm. She's like, well, you, you can always get it. You've always got it when I've got around. I said, well, I ain't got it. I don't, I don't know drug dealers. I said, I think you're looking for the wrong boy, man. She's like, oh, please, Kirk, help us out. And then I found out, yeah, she was in in 
I say in bed, not physically. She was in cahoots with a uh, either a pap or a journalist to get me done. But see that, yeah? Say she done that. Say that I said, oh, yeah, babe, how much do you want? I'm, I'll drop some round for you. Mm. I would be fucked. Career over. Done. Absolutely done for mm. her to get a little bit of money or a bit of clout. She had a good paid job. Mm. She didn't need no money. She was really doing good. She didn't need no clout. She was quite a, 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 a an up and coming porn star in in that part part of uh, mine and her life. But they just want that little like you would have fucked me then. Mm. I would have lost my job, my TV job at the time. My income would have stopped. My dad couldn't have had me involved in any of his businesses. Ah, and which paper, sorry, uh, printed that you had one of your co-stars tattoo on your body? So I have a pin-up girl tattooed on my leg, which I had done on Towie. The picture that I chose for the tattoo, which was was going to happen off Towie, they just wanted to film it, is a pin-up girl. I can't remember her name now. Is it Betty Page or Betty Ford? Betty Page. So anyway, I chose this tattoo. I said to Towie, I'm having a tattoo done on this date. And oh, we'll film it. They're very clever at manipulating, especially when I'm 21 at the time, young, naive, always partying. They're like, I think that would look better with red hair. I thought, actually, that looked more of a vibrant tattoo. And then they're saying, oh, Kurt, that really looks like Amy Charles. They're very manipulative. And I went along with it. There isn't a picture of Amy Charles on my leg. I can show you the tattoo later. It is a pin-up girl. I can find a picture on Google. They just change the colour. But you know how clever they are? When they got me to show Amy that scene, if anyone can go back and watch that scene, so my tattoo, the woman's got red hair, red dress, and she's even got two gold bracelets. Amy had the exact same on. Mm. They would have told her what to wear. You can't get that coincidence. I think I can't remember that scene so much, but I think I might have played along with it and said, yeah, it is you, Amy. I didn't. I, I, didn't, I wouldn't get a picture of a girl that I was dating on a TV show, you know, which I actually wasn't with. Tattooed on your body. Tattooed on my body, you know. Oh, yeah. And what about, there's another article I read where you went and done a job. So once you left town, when you started your jet washing firm. Oh, I know what you're going to say. Can I take over on this one? Go for it. Literally straight after TV, I went from, I think, what was I doing? I was labouring and then I was doing internet cabling all, all down the roads. And then I just... When and I had a bit of bad press, I think I, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've read this. I had a bit of bad press. I was a labourer for a construction company. We was working at a house in Chelmsford. It was me and a good friend of mine was working for a guy called Danny, and we were just labourers. And um, sorry, and uh, yeah, I think we was on the job for nearly a year, maybe just under. And our boss rings up and says, "You're not in tomorrow. Jobs come to a standstill." I was like, you sure? We've still got a lot to do. He's like, yeah, no worries. Anyway, so he said, Kurt, I ain't got no more work for you. I was like, all right, fine. So I had no work. Fucking article comes out in the, in the scum. I think it was a scum then. That Kirk's company has ripped off money from a job uh, and left him stranded with an half-built house. The fuck? What's that? I've read the article. The fucking house I was working at, labouring, mm. my governor, my boss, had took the next instalment of money off him to do a roof and fucked off and then told us the work's done. But where the, the customer I knew who I was, Kirk from Towie, she told a fucking story as if I am a part of that. I was a labourer. I was out of work. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And that's how they done it. And, and I remember that. So uh, two days after that article, I was at, the, I was at um, the halfway house on the A127. Some geezer, he looked like a proper mush as well. We had a trailer, I think he was building, like he was a builder. Pulled up to me, who read that article, you, you scum, Robin. C I was with my son, yeah. No, I wasn't with my son. I was with my mate's mate and my kid, in his kid, yeah. And he was a proper mush. And I was like, for the paper to print the same, nothing to do with me, mm. right? I was a labourer on a job. Then I got told there's no more work tomorrow. Simple as that. But now this woman wants to sell a story to the son that I'm involved in robbing her money. I got put it. I got someone put it on me because of that. Mm. Some random guy that read this article and believed it. I was out of money as well because of that. The guy owed me money. I had, you know, I need fucking stupid money. But that's how people see me now. Do you mm. know what I mean? So my dad would never respond to any things. My dad done a big tweet saying my son's come out from TV. I've watched that boy go jump from TV onto a building site. Up at four, 
in at 7.30, grafting his arse off, fucking filthy, digging holes, building roofs, knocking walls down. My son had no involvement in that company. The guy that owned the company done him over, and they used a picture of me. So I took a selfie once at work with my mate, who was the labourer as well, and the governor. Mm. And I took a picture. So they put the picture next to the article, like, we're like uh, rogue traders in a sense. You fuck it. You not think I felt bad once I found out that he nicked money off them. And attach your name to it, boom. Massive story. That's it. And and that was after TV, that's when I tried to make an honest life. Go work. Normal job. Graft. I used to love grafting. I still do now. I love grafting. Another article that I read then on the on the subject of grafting, you went and done a job for Arge? Yeah, yeah. Listen, I love Arge now, yeah. He's great. We, we've all had our ups and downs. So I set up a jet washing company. Um, and during lockdown, it was absolutely smashing work. You know, I was I was allowed to still work during lockdown um, because I I did not come into contact with anyone. People used to pay me mm. over, over, over over the uh, fucking bank transfer, and they'd send me a picture of what to do, like what they wanted jet washing. So, you know, I worked throughout lockdown, and um, Arge got in contact with me and asked. Um, and again, there's no disrespect to him because I bet he would have regretted this now. But it was a dog move and fucked me up financially a lot. So he said, oh, Kirk, I, only, I hadn't spoke to him since Towie, by the way. But he randomly got in contact and said, oh, it's Kirk, so you've got a jet washing company. I need my house done. You know, drama, mate. Oh, come have a look. When I had a look, he's got a lovely house, the lad. Really nice. Huge driveway, even bigger. Bigger back garden. It's like a fucking hill, his garden. It was going down and down and down. So don't quote me to it, because I can't remember the exact price. But I think it was about three grand. It would have been the job. And I'd done it to him for half price. I sort of underquoted the job as well, even though I'd done half, I uh, underquoted it. Anyway, I'd done the job. I took my mate with me. My mate was working with me during lockdown. He was on furlough and he was in recovery with me. So he needed to get out of the house. You know, a lot of addicts couldn't sit in that house during lockdown in a sense. So I said, no worries, mate, come work with me. You know, I'll get you out of the house. He's done a bit of jet washing with me. He was, he was, good, he was a good friend of mine as well. Um, so he was helping me. Anyway, done the job. Got the money. I spoke to Arj once on that, twice on that job. At the beginning, no, three times. At the beginning, when I turned up, I said, no worries, mate, just stay in your house, keep the door shut. Dun, dun, dun. Halfway through the job, I think you popped out. Let's go get the money. I did pay tax on that money, don't worry. <laughs> um, and then at the end of the job, saying thank you very much. A um, couple of days later, my mate rings me up, who's helped me on that job. Oh, Coke, are you fucking serious? By the way, I'm not on social media at this point. When I come out of TV, I've done social media for a couple of more years and I fucked it off. I had my jet washing Instagram at that point. I said, what do you mean? What, 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 what have I done? What have I done? He sent me a link to the mail online. Um, fucking pictures, right? When I used to be on TV, I'd spot a pack from a mile away. But where I've been out of TV for so long and I've got a normal job, so there are now pictures of me jet washing Arge's drive and a picture of Arge pointing out some of the driveway to me. No one would know about that. No one would know that I was there. It was locked down. No one was allowed out their fucking house. Paps don't sit outside your house. It ain't fucking LA. Mm. You ain't Cameron Diaz. The pap ain't going to think this picture's going to be a million pound. No one's plotted outside Towie people's houses, unfortunately, unless you're doing something bad at the time. Maybe you're dating someone that they want to see. And I'm like, no one would know. And the only fucking pictures are when Arge come out of the house. When he went to the bank to get the dough, you know, this is the downfall about this. He would have got money for that. Yeah. My mate got a bollocking by his company because he was on furlough and he got seen at work. My mate wasn't getting paid. He wasn't a worker. He was, he was just coming to work with me for the day, getting him out of the house. You know, he got a big bollocking. When they took pictures of me and so I would have got money for that. I, I knocked 1,500 pounds off this fucking job for that fella. Mm. During lockdown, I mean, I was doing two, three jobs a day, five days a week, easy. Absolutely doing really good. I didn't need that job. I appreciate that he got in contact with me. Um, and, and he would have got, I don't know how much money he would have got, but it, it would have been quite a high number selling picture because I've gone from walking a red carpet at a film premiere to cover there to toe in mud, jet washing a co-star, my old co-star's house, who's still a celebrity. It was the perfect fall from grace article, weren't it? Exactly. Mm. You know, I loved it. I loved my jet washing job. Fucking loved it. But it was, it was like... But their twist on it. That was their twist. 
look at look what, look where Kirk is now. I was earning more money jet washing than I ever did on Tauwi, by the way. Do you know what well, I mean? Us when you was on Loose Women, you you loved you was proud of your jet washing business. Love it. You I loved love it. it. The only reason I've done it because I moved out of the area mm. and I, I I didn't want to have to restart the whole company again in a different area. It wasn't, it was very distance. I've gone from Essex to Norfolk. I didn't know people's budgets. I didn't know if there were any other companies doing it. I didn't want to tread on people's toes. So, but I loved my jet washing. It was amazing. It was earning phenomenal money and I, I enjoyed doing it. But this is a downfall. What, and again, listen, Arj, at that time, I, was, I thought it was a fucking dog. Yeah, proper dog move. But I love the guy now. You know, he's battling sobriety like me. I was going to say, he was probably going through some real bad shit himself. Of course, you know, of course. But see what that done to me? Fucked me. So not only did they take a picture of Arj near me on the driveway, they took a picture of me jumping out the back of my work van. I had about... All my jet washing equipment is bolted in a frame in the back of my van. So you open your doors and you've got a thing called a van pack, everything bolted in there. It must have been, I don't know... Five grand, six grand, seven grand's worth of equipment, max, brand new. One of the pictures shows me jumping out the back of my van. You can see all my tools, right? Them tools get stolen a lot. Mm. You've only got to go on the internet to see how many vans get broken in a day. You know the thing that really fucking hurt me and fucked me up financially and took a lot of my business away? And this is a business that I've built up since Towie. I've done with the TV and I thought, I'm going to, this is, I know it sounds silly, but this is something I could have passed down to my son. Mm. You know, I, I went from struggling to get one job a week to doing two, three jobs a day, you know, turning down weekend work and stuff. This was a company that I could have bought another van and got another worker and grown. Um, they took a picture of me walking past my van and the side of my van. So I always swear by having a landline for a business as well as a mobile you got a landline, makes you look more established. My landline was my home phone. Fucking hell. My phone just, it was, when I'm on it, I could hear a beep that another call was coming through 24-7. Mm. As long as I was awake, I could hear that phone. I'd answer it. Oh, yeah, is this the towel? Like, fucking hell. Oh, he's Arj there. Oh. Like, fuck, I think I'll put up with maybe just under two weeks of that because in between some of them were real genuine quotes. Mm. It upsets me, man. It really does because um, I built that company up and I had to pull the landline out of the wall. Mm. Uh, fucking hell, I didn't think I'd get upset about that. But I noticed such an impact financially from that. Like, so bad. And this was my baby, my business. I'd never set anything up. Why am I getting upset for this? Fucking hell. But that business, it was a jet wash business, but it meant so much to me. Mm. I really, I went from TV to being Charlie Big Bollocks to, I don't mind working. I love grafting. I love meeting people, cleaning their drives. And it sounds silly when they come out and go, oh my God, I was about to pay 10 grand to get that brand new. Mm. So they get relayed. You've just done it for X amount. Um, when I pulled that landline out, my diary just went dead. It's also part of your sobriety journey, weren't it? So it's very important to you. I was early in the sobriety then, mm. you know, early early doors in sobriety. So it was really meaningful. Yeah, and it was it was a new life for me. It was, I built this brand up, um, and look, no disrespect, he'd done what he'd done, Arj, man. He, this is what would have happened. When you're in that industry, you know a pap that you rely on. You think, you think these paps are just bumping into these celebs? Yeah. No, they're not. They're ringing them up and splitting the money. That's what Harry used to work. You know, that's how it used to work. I'm going out this night. Do you want to take a picture? But what I'll do is I'll meet you here so no one else can pat, pat me, you know, and they split the money. That's business. Good on you. But that fella would have rung up a photographer and said, I've got Kirk here. He's going to come and jet wash me drive. Mm. Last picture you probably would have took of him would have been on a red carpet, suited and booted. Now he's, covered, he's in wellies. Not only did I do a discount on him, a hefty discount. £1,500 off, £1,500 I let him off with. Mm. The job cost me more than I realised because I underquoted it because when I was quoting the job, I was walking around with Arj and it was good to see him, you know what I mean? Fuck the money. Fuck everything else. I went to start my life again mm. and all you can think about is, perhaps you've got to see this, not well done, Kirk. Uh, many people could, but probably not a lot of people could go from that size of fame that I was at that short period of my life to literally putting flyers through people's doors to jet wash their driveway. I was so proud of myself. Mm. And he fucked me. But he never, he didn't look at the, circum uh, the consequences of his actions. 
3,000 flyers printed with that landline number on that I'd already posted through people's doors. Mm. So every fucking flyer that I posted, probably didn't post all of them, probably just over half of the flyers, that is now irrelevant because that number got pulled out of the wall. Because, look, look take away what I've done because the papers think they can just print what they fucking want. Mm. It fucks me. Not only was I scared that someone was going to break into my van at night because they know what's in the back of it now because they can see, not only have I had to pull my phone line out and lose 80% of my income, you know, to literally, after I paid tax, it was there was enough money to probably just live that week. I used to do the odd drain blockage with it because um, the, the equipment's the same for unblocking drains. So drain blocking was great, you know. It was a horrible job. You are literally cleaning shit, mm. stuck shit out of people's drains. Sometimes you've got to put your legs in the manhole, your arms in, you're getting shit sprayed up your face. But that, I'd probably do a few of them a week. You know, it was fucking... Not 80 quid to 120 quid for a drain block that would take me 10, 20 minutes. Yeah. So even though I was going to get covered in shit, it was money's worth it. That's what I do. I work for money. So the first article that ever come out when I, and again, I wasn't on social media at this time. So they had found my work profile. And it wasn't Kirk set up a jet washing company. Kirk cleans out toilets for a living. 5% of my business was drain blocker gym. But an article of Kirk set, say, driveway cleaning business up wouldn't look as good for sales as Towie's Kirk Norcross cleans shit for a living. Yeah. You know what I mean? That would be far too much praise, wouldn't it? Yeah, you know? and But that that is the, that's typical press. Yeah. Shit sells and they don't care who they destroy. Is there any other article off the top of your head without me without me probing or steering it that had a real significant detrimental impact to your life or your mental health? Quite a few. What are the ones that really mean something to you for good or for bad that you'll never forget? Um, the, 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 the leaked image of me was uh, masturbating on Skype with some girl. Um, not everyone, but most of the people listening to this have probably sent or received a naked picture with someone they're either dating, sexting, seeing or flirting with. Mm. And we, you know, it happens, doesn't it? I'm not the only person that's probably ever had FaceTime or webcam sex with someone they're dating or a partner. Mm. We've all done it. No, no, not everyone. Some people like to know. I'll, I'll wait until I see that person in private. I, I've sent naked pictures to girls I'm seeing. Whoever leaked these multiple pictures of me masturbating, the videos the pictures of the selfies that I've sent to a girl that I was probably intimate with that I would have only have ever sent one if we were on that wavelength. It's not like, you know, babe, what are you up to today? Oh, nothing, Kurt. I'm just going to work. Dick pic. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy your day. It would be, all right, babe, what are you doing? She'd be like, I'm just chilling in bed. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Right. And then it, 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 I wouldn't just randomly fucking pepper people with fucking pictures. It would be someone that I'm with. Whoever put them pictures out, man, and the videos. I was Skyping with a girl that I was seeing, masturbating while she was playing with herself. An intimate thing with a girl that I'm fucking dating. So it had to be her. Had to be, you know? And uh, then it comes out in the newspaper. They screenshotted the fucking a still from the webcam of me with my cock in my hand, fagging my mouth. At me nut, I was fucking out my fucking face. They have put that in the newspaper. And by the way, the the full video's online if you want to watch it. Mm. Fucked me. I didn't want to be around, man. I did not want to be around, Liam. My manager told me that you just got to go quiet for a couple of days. And I've got nothing now. I've got nothing left. I've got no... You've seen all of me. You've seen all of me. People are going to be like, oh, well, you're sending pictures like that. I ain't sending it to strangers. Mm. I'm sending it to someone who's on the same vibe that's probably just sent me a picture as well. And for the papers to be able to print that, Liam, I remember I just got, my, my manager said, Kurt, do not leave the house for a couple of days. Do not post on social media. He said, do one post. And I've done a post saying, oh, come on, guys, on Twitter. We've all done it. I'm just the only kind that got caught, yeah? I just got so much drugs. And I said to my pals, I ain't allowed to leave me out for a couple of days until this calms down. I just didn't want to be here. I didn't know who I could trust. Well, the one person you thought you could trust to the point you could send them something like that. Hey, fuck you, betrayed you, know? you. Yeah, and then after that, I sort of become 
not confident with my naked body, but like, well, there you have it. Well, yeah, why not? Why not? You've fucking seen it. I've got nothing left. Mm. I've got nothing left. Have it. That's that's me. You, you know what I mean? It's still on the fucking internet now. Like well, everyone's just paused this podcast well, right now, and then they've just gone. Plus, add a new browser. Well, I've just sat back and listened, but yeah, I saw that yesterday. I, I, you, you, you can still find it, and I can see why you would be upset because you could tell that you was at your nut. It mm. will confirm that you have got a penis like a cucumber, mm. so there is a saving grace there. But I can see why that would yeah. that, it, that would upset me. Yeah, I think it's a big thing to say that suicide crossed my mind. It didn't. And when I said I didn't want to be here, I just wanted the world to swallow me. Yeah, I couldn't be Kirk Norcross because people think they already know Kirk now. Mm. You know, and it's just all of these little things that have happened. And again, I am no saint. I have been horrible to people. I've done horrible things. I've had horrible things happen to me. It's life. It happens. We live, we learn, you know, we grow. But these are all been chinks in my armour. And I'm not telling anyone to do drugs. Please do not. But drugs was the only thing at that point that could shut that up. That was the thing that could swallow you up. It was. Like, my, my brain is like, it could have been this person, it could have been that person. Because throughout the years... I had probably had, I was 20, 19 to 23 maybe when that happened. I had multiple sexual partners, like everyone did in their early 20s. Mm. So I've received a few naked pictures. I've sent a few naked pictures. I'm like, who the fuck could that have been? Who the fuck could that have been? I know one of, because there's multiple videos of me masturbating. Mm. One of them, I know I was hacked. Right? Two of them, I know that I was Skyping a girl. Yeah. Because I'm trying to look sexy. I'm like... Look at my penis. <laughs> but yeah, so a lot of people have seen me penis, um, my naked body, and it's it's just been chinks in my armour as it goes. And look, I need to say this because I know there's going to be, we're going to be peppered with comments that saying, well, that's the fucking career you chose. Like, you've got to live with it. I'm aware of that. Yeah, I'm aware that I went onto a public TV show that is in the public domain that that we share an aspect of our life with. But it doesn't mean you're allowed to have all of me. You know what I mean? Like, you, you can't own me because I chose to do a, a bit of entertainment because that's at that point in my life, that's what I felt I was good at. Mm. You know, I felt I was good on TV at that point in my life. And now that you're saying that I have to just sit back and take it, that you can show every part of my, it, it, of my life, even if it's true or false, you're going to print it. Because most of these people are going to believe what they print. And trust me, it does get back to you when you're walking down the street. So I'm aware what career I chose. I'm aware that I'm on social media. But your social media are for people that wants to follow you, that are interested in you, that like you. When you put it in a paper, you're basically rubbing it in people's faces that don't like me. Mm. Fair enough. I, I am Marmite. Literally, you either love me or you hate me. It's, it's how it's been my whole life. But... I'm not yours. You're not public property. I'm not public property. You know what I mean? Okay, some of the stuff that's printed that's quite maybe uh, derogatory or, or not nice about me might be true. But you ain't got to fucking print it. Yeah, I've done bad things in my life, Liam. Yeah? And I'm trying to work on them. I'm trying to overcome them. And I'm trying to work to become a better person. But when you're going to boom, 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 put it in the fucking paper, put it in the paper, put it in the paper, how can I get over something that is fucking smashed in my face every day? Mm. They don't think about the outcomes. Well, you also do a lot of good, mm. and that doesn't get reported on. You're, well, I know that you're, when you're talking about all the graphs that you do, people that follow you on Instagram, they'll just see you sort of popping around the house. I know that when you're not popping around the house, you're grafting. Yeah. I know that you're in your DMs supporting people that come to you for solace and strength. Yeah. I know how you how you operate and how you put, you put a lot out. Once your cup's full... You give it to others. Yeah. And that's never going to get printed. But that, And that's every day you document that. But right. they pick that one thing. Kirk's got a new girlfriend. Recently, you had a oh, relate. Man, and yeah. I'd imagine that caused you problems. So I was with a girl recently. Her name was Ashton. She is amazing. I finally met a woman that ticked every box that I had ever wanted in my life. And I was so happy. She has a job, which is quite high up. And we were dating before we put it on social media. She put a picture on her post. I used that on her Instagram. I put the same picture on my profile. I know a lot of people are going to see that. She rings me up in bits. What's happened? She sends me a link for the mail online. The picture that I put on my Instagram of me and her 
bosh, she puts that they put that up. Kurt's got a new girlfriend. Okay, that's not that bad. First of all, she's got a very high up job. She represents big clients. She doesn't need the heat. Okay. People are going to say, well, you put it on your Instagram. No, no, no. I understand that. Okay. My qualms ain't really with you putting Kurt's got a new girlfriend. First of all, people don't give a shit if I've got a new girlfriend. I, I'm, I'm just a normal person. I've got a couple of businesses. I keep myself to myself. When you put Kurt has got a new girlfriend, yeah, you're going to think, and? So in that article, they have, they don't know nothing about this girl. They're just her name. Because so they just like, Kurt's got a new girlfriend, besotted, and they describe what you're wearing in the pictures. Well, they can see. They're looking at the picture that you just ripped off my Instagram. But not only did they say Kurt's got a new girlfriend, they then want to carry on that story by listing every fucking girlfriend I've had and what date I was with them, for what year, for what time frame, for the reasons I split up with them. You know, I think my girlfriend at the time is going to read them and think I'm one of many. Hmm. For three days, that girl was at my house crying. She was worried about her job. If they will keep her, if they will sack her, because that is hot. That is too much press that she needs for her career. And now I feel to blame for it. And I kept saying, I'm, like, I'm, I can't do nothing. This is my life. I didn't surprise you with who I was, but I did not think it would go on a fucking Daily Mail that Kurt Norcus has got a girlfriend. I didn't think that, Liam. So the picture that they used was in your stories for 24 hours. Mm. So I thought... Kirk has got journalists essentially trolling him silently, waiting. just waiting. Yeah, I'm fucking gutted about it. I really am because I could have spent the rest of my life with this girl and it got a bit too much for her, which I'm completely aware with, but then started getting a bit too much for me. She started making, she didn't, sorry. She's amazing. The situation started me making me feel shit for being Kirk Norcross. And, uh, and then on the fourth day, I was... She didn't stay at mine because she had work in London. And I said to myself, right, if she, if she brings this up again, saying how detrimental it is, I can't stay with her. Because th it's true. I am probably detrimental to her job. And if she she's worked a whole life for this job, and there is potentially something I might post that could get her sacked. And I thought, right, three days she's been on me about, like, she's so worried about her job. I said, if she goes on one more time, I, I'm just going to have to, say we can't be with each other because I now start to feel shit for Kirk Norcross for being me. You know, I feel shit about the past that I've had. Um, but, y y you know, I've got to protect my own energy. If someone's going to make me feel bad for being who I am, mm. no matter how much I love them, I've got to let them go as well. And then on the fourth day, she rings me up and says, oh, my, my bosses have, no, on that morning, she's like, my bosses have asked me to come in for a meeting. She's like, well, I'm fucking shit myself, Kirk. Fuck all day, I'm thinking she's going to get the tin tag, right? And it's going to be fucking because of me. This woman's worked for years to get where she is. Mm. And uh, she rings me up. It's like, right, they spoke to me. They weren't really happy. Um, and they said, I've got to be careful now of what goes on social media. Again, if I didn't have my party bus company, my social media would be gone. Problem solved. But I do have businesses that need to promote it socially, okay? It's the way of the world now, okay? It's free advertising for a business. And that's what pays my bills at the end of the day um, and pays my son. Um, and I just said, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't, I can't be a risk to your job. Yeah. But I can't have you making me feel shit for who I am, mm. you know? And, um, I'm fucking gutted, man. Yeah, I'm she, gutted for you, She mate. was such a keeper. Mm. But listen, that, that's gone. The, the girl's gone, um, because stupidly I put it on my social media. Um, and let, look, I've got to take blame for it. But I... I haven't been on TV, Liam, for so long. I haven't been on TV since 2015, 2016. How long ago was that? Is that nine years? Eight, nine years. Eight, yeah. eight, nine years. I haven't been on TV in that long. I joined a dating app that ended out on the Mail Online. Mm. I had a hair transplant that ended up on the Mail Online. Um, I got a girlfriend, ended up in the Mail Online. I set up a jet wash company, ended up on the Mail Online. I'm still... I still walk around. People are still stopping me in the streets, asking for pictures and saying, Kirk, I love the like, I love your social media, rah, rah, rah. So on the media and the public side, I still get treated like a celebrity. I'd rather, this is what I want. I wouldn't want to go back on TV if the media just left me alone. Mm. Just stop printing about Kirk because no one wants to know about him, man. I'm just a normal fucking worker. 
Like, I'm just normal. But I'm getting treated like a celeb. I can't live a normal life without it going on um, on uh, newspaper articles. But I ain't getting no TV money. Mm. So last year, I thought, yeah, I want to go back on TV for many reasons. One, I'm a, um, a better frame of mind now. I am the real cook, you know. Before, I didn't know who I was. You know, I'm sober. But I, I, this is... This stigma that's attached to Kurt Norcross, uh, let's, what do we say, the reality star still, I think. Whenever I'm in the paper, it's Towie's Kirk, Towie's Kirk. The mm. fuck? Towie don't even want me back on. Why are you still referring me as Towie's Kirk? Or what about, put me back on Towie? Put me back on Towie. I mean, I, that would be brilliant. Well, I tried last year. I'm going to be quite open. I really wanted to do Celebs Go Date Him. I had so many people trying to put me forward last year. No one's interested in me. And that's the truth. It's so weird that not one single production company are interested in me, but every single fucking newspaper is. You will be back on TV. Mm. You are purpose built for TV. And I'd love to see you back on TV because I think you're great. How many people watching this would love to see Kirk back on TV? Imagine you returning to Towie. <laughs> Let me tell you what, what would happen with the ratings. Uh, yeah, well, through the roof. It's look. I'd love to go back on now. You know, I want people. People think they say Kirk's Towie. They've never seen Kirk on Towie. I was some spoiled little fucking gearhead on Towie. Mm. I'm I'm a mature man now. You know, I still have my moments. What other, what other TV shows would you like to be on? Dancing on Ice. I've always loved to do. I'd love to do cooking shows. I love cooking. I, you know, what I really would want to do is a gardening show. I really would. Designing people's gardens. Sort of like Ground Force. Mm. Yeah, I want to do Ground Force. You do know that most of your fans would want to watch you doing it naked. Ah, oh, get me dick out. No, <laughs> no, I'd love to do Ground Force, uh, a newer version. You know? Mm. Not on BBC, though. Would um, you do Big Brother again? Yeah, yeah, I'd do that. Yeah, would... Listen, I would do any TV other than any BBC programmes, but I would do any TV to show you me. Because... There is a large part of the people that watch TV, there's a large part of that audience that have watched me grow up and don't know the real me. Put me on any of them shows and just let me be me, please. You but know? also, I'd love to see you come back. I'm, yeah. I'm telling you. You know what is weird? That This is not just me. I believe this is any old Towie cast member. So I've done your podcast, Liam. I think what, what views did it get? Close to half a million. But if you take all the the shorts and the clips we've done, it's been viewed by north of 5 million. You know, it's mad. There five, is an interest. 5 like, million people are interested in you. I'm still getting, like, and I'm not saying this in a bragging way, I'm trying to say that there, there clearly is some kind of interest because I do my Instagram, I get like thirty, uh, like 27 to 47,000 views a day. Depends on sort of what content I'm doing on my uh, Instagram I have one to two million people view my profile uh, a month on Instagram. Done a podcast with you, over 500,000 views. Mm. And I'm like, even as a business opportunity for any production company, there's fucking clearly an interest. Business is numbers. It's Stats business. don't lie. Stats don't lie. Now, there's three things I want to I wanna touch base on. Two of the things we touch base on our first podcast. Mm -hmm. So firstly, you told me that you fancied Jodie Marsh during our first interview mm -hmm. and that she come to the club and you was embarrassed and your dad set it up and it was mm -hmm. a lovely story. But what you didn't tell me was, and I now know because I've been digging <laughs> paper articles, you'd done a naked shoot with her afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I think I was dressed up as a woman as well in one of it, one of them scenes. She had underwear on, but you were completely stark bollock naked. Yeah, what, got, so what's it like being bollock naked with Jodie Marsh? I got hard on. I got hard on drawing a fucking scene, didn't I? We were doing that. I think we were cuddling or something, or she's straddling me or something. All uh, of it. I started getting a fucking hard on. And what I have to do, this, I don't know if any other lad does this. I don't know, not every lad. I, I've got dyspraxia, so I'm terrible at maths. Bad. Mm. So I start doing maths in my head when I get hard on. And I remember I'm doing this photo shoot, Joni Marsh, and I could feel my fucking Corey starting to raise. And I'm like, six, six, twelve. <laughs> and, 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 and my head with my dyspraxia my head just goes numbers fucking hell and it went down but what that was so I become friendly with Jodie Marsh um, and she was bringing out um, a supplement range for a, she was banging big in the gym at one point wasn't she yes. and she was bringing out a supplement she range she lost all that weight yeah and she asked to do a shoot to promote that 
But yeah, I just said yes to that show. I didn't, it wasn't a paid shoot or anything like that. Um, yeah, she was celibate when we were, I, I, we wasn't, we wasn't, gay, we wasn't dating or seeing each other. We were purely just friends that hung out a lot. You know, we just got on. Um, I tried it a few times and that's why I sort of drifted away. She sold a story actually saying, Kirk's pushing me into sex and everything. It wasn't the case. After we're, she invited you to do a naked shoot. Yeah, <laughs> but she was celibate. I got to respect her decision then, you know. Um, and and I wanted to be in a relationship where I could have sex with my partner. Mm. I don't think that was much to ask, you know. It's pretty standard stuff. Yeah. And then there was the Mark Wright fight. Oh, yeah, yeah. We spoke about this on the podcast, well, didn't we? We? Sp- we spoke about that. And then, I mean, you painted a picture to me like you really come unstuck. Mm. So, again, I'm doing research for today. And I've now eventually watched that fight from mm. three different camera angles. Mate, you didn't do too bad. Yeah, well, you put him on his ass. He says he slipped. No. He says he slipped. Yeah, no. <laughs> you, you put him on his ass, and considering that he was an actual boxer from a boxing family and you weren't, mm. I thought it went completely the other way, but you'd done a lot better than I uh, thought. Well, thank you for that, and that is due to my father, and I'm very honest, I got battered on that fight, battered, and they showed my dad the original cut. And so my dad apparently was a bit sus after. He said, I knew something was up. And he said, you ain't having my son look like that on that TV. He said, I can't watch that. And uh, they edited it, so I didn't look as bad. But I got peppered throughout the whole fight. Listen, it is what it is, isn't it? You still put him down. I'll put him down. Listen, you know, look, I I said it before, you know, it was a very long time ago, but really sunk my pride um, at that point in my life to, to be publicly beaten on TV purely to for entertainment and to make someone more famous than someone else. And if that's what they wanted to do to propel someone else's career, mm. I would have happily have come off the show if that's what they wanted. Not two people smashing the shit out of each other. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, you you said the head guards, did you see it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, your head guard was loose, too big for you, and it didn't cover all of your face. Well, I'm just an amateur one. Yeah, it, you and know. his one covered his cheekbones and everything. They stitched you up. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. But I think watching it back, you didn't do as bad well, thank as, you very much. As, as what I thought. Well, that's all I knew going into the fight. I knew it sounds petty, but I know I've got a bang on me. Mm. And when Mark asked me to do the fight and said he's never had a fight in my life, in his life, I was like, all I've got to do is land one. If I land one, it's game over. Yeah, I didn't realise before I landed that one, he probably got about 17 in. <laughs> what are these? <laughs> Where are all the, has he got eight arms? Because they're fucking hitting me from everywhere. But yeah, listen, if that's what other people have got to do to to make their self big time, give it to him. Now, Kirk, you never told me this. Oh, I, never, is it? I never knew this. I had no idea. Complete took me by surprise when I'm going down the Kirk Norcross <laughs> rabbit hole yesterday. What have I done? You can sing. Oh, <laughs> have you not seen that? No. <laughs> Not only can you sing, you have sung, and there's music videos of you singing. Um, Mate, talk to me about that. Thank you. I've always... uh, I personally don't think I can sing. Um, I believe I have enough structure to my voice for a studio to be able to make me sound great. I've always loved music. Um, I'm never great at something, but I've been good at many things. Played the piano a little bit and drums and bongos and whatnot and... The singing, before anyone else said, that sounds all right, it made me feel good. Mm. It was, yeah, it made me feel good. So what started me singing publicly for the first ever time was when The Only Way Is Essex done a live episode. But to try and do a live episode, everyone has to be in the same place. But Because Towie isn't, is it? You've got someone here, someone at that person's house, someone in that bar, that club, that restaurant, that gym. Mm. So they're like, what can we do to get... Because for it to be live, all the cameras have to be, you know. So why don't we do a talent show? So it'd be a talent show. They're inviting an audience in. And the Towie stars, will, whatever they're talented at, can do on stage. So when we were sorting it, it was whoever was organising it. It was a charity do. And they're like, right. So they start giving everyone talents in a sense. They're like, right, Joey Essex and Diags, you are going to sing a song together. I think it might have been a One Direction song. Use a mime it and just do a dance. Um, I think they got maybe Lauren or Chloe or whatnot to do. I'm a Barbie girl, you know that. And they're like, Kirk, what, what talent you got? I ain't nothing. I got nothing. And even though I felt at that time I was quite a big cast member, they were so quick to want to lose me. 
Like, so quick. So quick. I mean, every time I split up with a girl on Towie, they were like, well, unless you get with another girl, we've got, got nothing for you, Kurt. We're, you're off to go. So that's why I was always trying to romance because that was my job, you know? And when I said, I haven't got a talent, oh, well, you won't be able to be on the live episode then, Kirk. Do you understand doing that much of Towie and then not being allowed on that fucking live episode? Mm -hmm. And I said, I like singing. And he said, all right, you'll sing then. You'll sing. I was like, oh, no, but I can't. I can't sing. I'm not singing on a live fucking show with an audience of a thousand people. There was a live audience there as well. They're like, well, you either do that or you, you, we haven't got something for you. Like, oh, my God. They said, don't worry. ITV provide vocal coaches and everything like that and dance choreographers for everyone. They literally, it was like X Factor. So I had a day one training with a vocal coach. I think I had a few weeks of it, but it was the day one. So I've come in, it was a woman that was a choreographer and a man that was a vocal coach. I said, hi, Kirk. And they said, you're singing a swing song, ain't you? Ain't that kicking the head? I said, yeah. And they said, right. I said, by the way, I can't fucking sing, guys. I said, they're just making me do this, so I'm on this episode. And they said, well, we'll see what we can do. Just sing the song. And I sung my song, Ain't That Kicking Head, Dave Martin. And the vocal coach, he went, oh, see you later then, mate. I went, what? You mean you don't need us? I was like, what? He's like, mate, you're great. I was like, oh, fucking wow. I got all emotional, right? Because I've never had a compliment before um, in that sense. But anyway, so I've said to Towie, I suffer with severe anxiety. Bad, bad anxiety. I can't be on the stage on my own. When that curtain opens and there is a thousand people in front of me and 1.2 million people on a camera watching me, I said, I don't think I could do it. I'll pass out. And I said, look, because they were filming a load of other scenes at the same time. I said, if you are getting me to sing, please make sure that all this goes on the TV. I'm not going through this panic. I was having panic attacks days leading up. I said, I'm not going through this panic leading up to it. Kurt, we're going to get you a live band on the stage so you're not on your own. I was like, thank you so much. And um, and trust me, we spoke to the vocal coach and he said you don't want to miss it anyway. So we're filming your whole episode. So I was the only one that was not a singer that was singing on that show. Jess Wright sung. She's a singer, amazing singer. They let everyone, everyone that was on stage, they were, you could see their act. You, like, look, go watch that live episode. Every fucker that performed on stage, that camera stayed there and filmed their fucking show. The whole show. Look at these. Look at Joey Essex. Look at Lauren Pope. Look at all of these fuckers. Look what the, all the hard work they've been doing. We're going to film them. When I had done my live singing, they decided to do two other scenes at the same time. I know we're digressing, this was purely just about my singing, but again, this was just pissed me off with Towie at that point. So I think they had Sam and Joey Essex having an argument and Lydia and Arj having an argument at the same time. I think you might have heard uh, five seconds of me singing. Five seconds, completely pointless for me doing the weeks of anxiety and mm. forcing, oh, if you ain't going to sing, you're off the fucking show, Kirk. You know? Um, and it was just, they were always quick to get me off. But singing, yeah. So I've done a cover of Ain't No Sunshine When She's Gone. So I climbed a mountain for sports relief for the ADHD Foundation. Done that for charity, for a good fucking cause. Done a proper video, paid for it all myself. That didn't go in the paper. Christmas songs to me are meant to be cheesy. Overly cheesy, aren't they? Yeah. Christmas songs. Many years ago, I was like to my pal, there ain't no cheesy Christmas songs no more. Let's make a cheesy old school Christmas song with a cheesy video, with a cheesy video, cheesy backdrops, cheesy song, the acting in there. Let's do it. So we've done it. It was meant to be cheesy mm. because that's what Christmas is to me. The old school fucking boy, J J George Michael, Wham, Christmas. That was the only song of mine that made it in the paper of how cringy my Christmas song was. Not the good ones that I've done. No. Not the one that I sung on live TV. Not the one that I've done for charity and potentially raised thousands of pounds for sports relief. Just the one where I sound like a dickhead. But that was the aim of it. Mm. But that that's... Don't watch the Christmas one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I I, 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 I... I... Yeah. I love singing. It makes me feel good. Um, it's... Again, I do stuff now that drugs used to do. Singing... When I dance, I do my dances every morning, don't I, Liam? Inspired by you, sir. Um, I dance in the morning because for that 60 seconds that I dance, I don't think of anything else. Mm. 
right? And I'll tell you another thing that I've been doing lately. Oh, I'm addicted to fucking Fortnite on the PlayStation. I'm 36. I like to play the PlayStation now. It's a new thing to me. You know what? I wake Fuck up. Out. I wake up in the morning, Liam. I do the house. Oh, no, the housework's already done. Who am I fucking kidding? <laughs> it gets done before I go to bed. But I wake up, have a coffee, let the dog out in the garden. And my head now is fucking this, 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 this. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. You know what? I get on that fucking PlayStation for 10 minutes, half hour, hour. Um, and I just do not think of nothing. It's just, that's what drugs used to do to me. Mm. You know? So um, I'm not saying Fortnite will cure your addiction, guys, but it's fucking helping. It's fucking helping. And I'll, I'll smash it on there. But And the dancing, the dancing, the singing, and the odd bit of gaming now and then just quiets me nut, Liam. I get that totally. You know? It don't shut off, Liam, my head, and just, yeah, I've got some points in my life now that are good. But the papers don't want to... Show that. Well, here's something that they can report on if they're watching this, which they will be because you're of great interest to them, we now know. Just round this interview off with your continued sobriety journey because you've now been sober for how long? On the 3rd of May 2024, I was three years sober. Three years and fucking hell. So if they want to report anything with a positive message to the masses because mm. so many people struggle with addiction, report that, that here's a public figure... <laughs> that has battled with his demons for three years and he's still winning. Yeah, man. Probably just over three years ago, I, yeah, it was uh, not a nice place to be in my head or even to be uh, near me. Um, and I have battled it and it is something that I am so proud of. Um, to anyone that hasn't suffered with addiction or knows anyone that suffers, you you will not understand the fucking hoops and... Uh, Temptations. I started dating a girl and she invited me to a festival and um, oh my God, it was the biggest test I have ever had. I mean, I've never had this feeling since I've been sober. I had pills being given to me physically, holding out in front of me. I had someone give me a little, you know what a bullet is. If people don't know what a bullet is, it's a little device that you put pad, like crush your coke up in, you turn it up, smash it up your nose. Someone give me one of them. You know what did really piss me off? All the times that I was on the drugs. No one would offer them for free. Nah, it's because <laughs> you're greedy. When, now when I'm sober, they're like, you want that? And I mean, I didn't want Coke, which was my tipple. I didn't want Coke. I wanted a pill. Everyone was, every, the girl that I was seeing was on drugs. That's why that had to, to end. You know, I just, I couldn't be around someone that, no disrespect to them, she can do them and she's fine. Mm. You know, they, they do drugs that night and they go home, sleep, and they're good. You, I do drugs that day, I'm gone. I'm gone, and I'm not sure if I'll come back. But I have never had temptation. Lucky enough, I was with our mutual friend, Chazza. Real talk, Chazza. Oh, I love him to death, mate, He's that geezer. He's so beautiful, isn't he? He's so beautiful. You know what? I think he might have been a part of this because I was driving him. It was very far from my house. It was a couple of hours away. And I was driving us both, and his van was at mine. And he, he was getting a bit ar ar uh, agitated, sorry, because he was sober and everyone started to get a bit too much out of their nut now. At the beginning, it's all right, but then it started getting really dark. And uh, he said, Kurt, we've got to go. And I was like, fucking Chaz, I, I really want to peel. And you know what I'd done? So I was on our way home, me and Chaz. He said, Kurt, I'm going to get to yours and just drive straight home. I was on a real strict diet, really strict diet. I was about 15 minutes from my house. I ring up at Domino's. And I ordered the fucking menu. Mm. And it was the Tyson Fury music fight yeah. that night. I was like, you know what? Well done you, Kirk. Well done you. You've been coming off the junk food. Have your dominoes. Watch the boxing and be proud. And you know what? I went to a festival with a friend and a girl that I was dating who I really liked. I had an amazing time. I drove myself there. I danced, I laughed, I met people, I drove myself home, I had a lovely takeaway, watched the boxing, went to bed, and I woke up brand new and went to the gym. And remembered the whole thing. Remembered it. Mm. And and that's all from sobriety. And listen, I ain't no preacher. If you can get on it and it ain't it doesn't affect your life in a negative way, crack on. There's always a chance that it might down the road, but but if drugs do affect you in a negative way, seek help. And I always say on every podcast, I went to a place called CA, which stands for Cocaine Anonymous. If you are struggling on any kind of drink, drugs, or substance, just Google CA, 
the, the, the letters C, A, and then where to find, and it will come up. Mm. There are hundreds, thousands. There'll be hundreds in your area. There are hundreds of thousands in the world. That goes for AA too, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, C, A, where to find. Google it. It will tell you where they are. All you got to do is if you are ready to stop, you've just got to go and say, guys, help me. Mm. And that's what I've done. And what about, what would you say to people watching this that are struggling with addiction that don't yet realise they're struggling with addiction? Do you remember that Remember that moment in your life where you think you've got it all under control and you actually haven't? And when you look back, you think the signs were there. Yeah, if, so, if you are It's a loaded question, but I know you If you, you are arguing it. with your partner because of drink or drugs, if mm. that is causing arguments, there is a problem. If you are late or missing or not doing as best in work because of drink or drugs, that's a problem. If you do not feel yourself, and also if you are doing drugs on your own, that is a problem. I don't care what people say. You're sitting indoors doing coke, which is a social drug. You've got a problem. I'm not, not knocking you because that's what I used to do. I'd go get a load of gear. Oh, this is going to make me talk to everyone. Give me loads, give me loads. I'm going home on my own, guys. Mm. The fucking, what insanity is that? Yeah, it's strange. You know? if the, you're su- the substance is strange. Yeah, if you're short on money because you spent the most of it on drugs and you're going to struggle to pay your bills, you have a problem. Mm. Please write all them down on a bit of paper, what I said. Rewind this part of the podcast. Listen to what I just said. If any of them are an effect of your life because of drink or drugs, it is a problem. You're not the problem. The substance don't agree with you. It don't discriminate. No. At all. Doesn't. It have anyone. In fact, it's actually set out to fuck you. It will. It'll fuck you in the long run. Listen, there ain't no one that's been doing it for 30, 40 years and got away with it scot free. It gets you in anyway. Health, mental, physical. Financial. Financial, it's there. It will get you. Mm-hmm. It will get you. Sometimes longer than ever. But look, if, I, I, some people don't like me saying this, but if you can have a pint and a ticket, go home, love your missus, still be there for your kids and whatnot. Make it to work on the Monday. Make it to work on the Monday. I ain't knocking people. But I worry about people that feel lost. And I was, this is so preachy, but I was lost and I found myself, man. Mm. And, you know, and I'm in a great place. I'm gutted about the, the, the girlfriend I was with that didn't end because I that was me set. Yeah. That was, I was done for life mm. with that woman, you know. And uh, But listen, we live and we learn. And I'm still learning daily, Liam. You know, I'm still learning daily who I am, becoming a better person. Um. I've got some good people wrapped around me now. You, Chazza, um, my friend who's my business partner, but he's my friend, my, my friend Bud. He gave me the biggest opportunity you could ever imagine. I have mm. two successful businesses due to this man. I haven't been given nothing. I work as hard as I can. I love this guy for no reason at all. He has introduced me to business and he is, I'm now doing very good because of this guy. I've got my friend Joe. His daughter and it's been given nine months to live. And if God, God fucking wishes she's still here. If anyone is here, please go on my GoFundMe on my website on my uh, Instagram because uh, yeah, but I've got good people around me. I've got me mum. I've got me older brother. You know, I've got some aunties and uncles. I've got some right good people wrapped around me now. It's took me thirty six years to realise who the good ones are. And I always state that I ain't perfect. I have made many mistakes in my life. I have done horrible things to people. I've said horrible things to people. I've thought horrible things about people. But I'm only human. Okay, and I lived this life to learn and to just just crack on, put my chin chin up, chest out. That's all I can do in life now. I always love spending time with you. Me too. You know that. And it's also nice when we do it like this, when there's cameras on us, because we, well, you have to have a different conversation than when you're just lounging about. Definitely. I, I have to roll yeah. my sleeves up and get into you. Yeah. I get to know you better. So before thanking you for trusting me again, and I really am grateful for your friendship and for your trust, and uh, I'll always see you right. Make no mm. mistake of that. Yes. Is there anything else you want to say, get off your chest, mention, just to round it all up? No, you know what? It's just... Look, I've got a past, and um, you can't judge me on my past, you know. It's gone. It's been and done. You, I, you, I can't judge no I'll never judge anyone on their past. So, you know, just don't judge me on my past, you know. Even the good things that have happened to me or the bad things, it doesn't matter. We've only got today, and um, I'm not a bad egg, Liam, you know. I just want to be a good man and a good father. It's as simple as that. You're one of the good guys, Geezer, and I love you, mate. Love you, mate. Thanks Thank for you very on. much. Thank you.